contractors, business owners. This is going to be a long one. Sit back, type in your questions. It's going to be a lot of profanity. Um, I don't know where this is going to end up, but uh, your life and your business sucks because of you. That's the cold hard fact. What are you going to do about it? Man, this all came. It's just uh, my heart's racing a thousand beats a minute right now. I can't it's, uh, can't catch my breath. Had to get me some uh, Mountain Valley spring water. But uh, this email, this this Facebook post that I read today, and then I responded to it, is one of the reasons I wrote the book for contractors only. You've mastered your trade now, master your business. It's why I've been doing what I've been doing since 1995. Is trying to educate contractors on how they can have everything, everything. And God damn, this fucking post rubs me the wrong way. And it rubs me the wrong way because one, it's a motherfucker begging for sympathy, begging for just having a pity party. And, and I'm okay with that. God bless you, man. Have it. But hundreds and hundreds of contractors responded to it saying that he's 100% right on track. They, they understand. They know they all joined this fucking pity party together. It's killing me. Stay tuned. I'm going to read it to you. All right, man. Warning right now. You don't like profanity. You don't want to be told the truth. Stop the video right now. Delete, delete, delete. I got to try to calm down a little bit first, but uh, this, this was posted in one of the contractor groups that I'm, uh, that I'm a part of. And in a different contractor group, uh, three days ago, a wife, a mother posted that her husband, my trade, my trade, wood flooring, uh, committed suicide, left her, left her with everything. Uh, you know, all the prayers going out, everybody, uh, 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 a lot of people in the group came together trying to help her. He, he left jobs unfinished, jobs scheduled in bed. It's just, uh, it's tough being a man. I, I know there's a lot of women right now in construction and, and God bless you. I love seeing it. But when you're the man of the house, man, you, you carrying the weight of the world. You are Atlas. You are Atlas carrying the world. I ain't bullshitting you, man. That's why I'm telling you about 95. I started teaching contractors what I was doing that made me successful. Uh, cause I wanted to give back. I learned from so many other people, but I got, I got to open this up, man. This is, this is killing me. Uh, so this guy writes this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to read what he posted, and I'm going to read you my response very short, and then I'm going to read it again. So this guy posts. He's a contractor, evidently. says, Un the unfortunate truth of owning and running a business. Running a business is really hard. What they don't tell you is that it can cause severe stress and anxiety and drains you mentally to the point of depression and in and even the most laid back people. People will talk about you, compare you to others, use you. They will view you as a service and not a person anymore. Friends and family will expect discounts and people will value you and your hard work less than the big chain stores. You have to worry about if you forgot to email a message or someone back. And are they going to think that it was on purpose? Did you disappoint them? Will they hold that against you? When in reality, you just can't get to everyone's messages and emails. Starting up and running a successful business puts incredible strain on personal lives and relationships, many of which fail because there is just often no work-life balance. You need to be the director, the worker, the administrator, the marketing team, the accountant, the cleaner, all whilst being a parent, a husband or a wife, family support, friends. It's one of the hardest things you will try and balance. There's a reason you don't see many people succeed in small businesses after five years. If they are successful, they are overwhelmed. It takes a toll. It's freaking exhausting especially the past couple of years when so much has been out of our control. Here's a small reminder that we are just normal people with hectic lives. Be kind, be patient, support small businesses, dot, 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 dot. And hopefully more of us will stick around. 
hundreds of people chimed in and said, oh my God, you're spot on. You've got it, man. I feel you. I've been doing this for years. Also 30 years in the business. This is exactly how I feel. I know where you're coming from. God damn. God damn. If this is how you feel, fucking quit. Quit and go get a fucking job. Whoa, shit, man. Damn. Oh, let me we, uh, let me read my response, and then we'll read this again. But I was I, it, it 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 drove me nuts. Like I said, the post drove me nuts, but the response from people drove me even more nuts. The other contractors joining the pity party. Sweet Jesus! I, I, I responded, "Whose fault is it if you don't succeed? Yours." This post in one of my groups is I, so. The sad thing is everyone agreed with him. Uh, that, so here was my reply. Unfortunately, everything you just wrote is 100% wrong. The problem is we master our trade and think that because we are great at it, our trade, we should start a business. Knowing your trade has nothing, get that, to do with running a business. All of the struggles you've mentioned are from a lack of business knowledge. Learn business before you open a business. If not, learn it as quickly as you can. If not, you will go through everything you mentioned, and it's no one's fault but your own. There is a reason people pay more than $70,000 to get a master's degree in business, or they save up two to $300,000 and they buy into a franchise. So that was my response. Uh, a couple of guys said, man, you can't say someone is 100% wrong, uh, even if uh, uh, most of it was. I said, the fucking post was so bad. If any of it was right, I didn't want to acknowledge it. That's like some dude beating the shit out of his wife and then handed her a handkerchief to, to wipe the blood up. And I'm saying, man, every, everything he did was 100% wrong. And you're like, well, no, he gave her a handkerchief. That was right. What the fuck? Let me calm down. Jesus, this this shouldn't be water. This this should be straight pure ass tequila. God damn, that's good. The Mountain Valley spring water. They got me, man. They got me. Let's read it again. And type in, man. Let me go up here to the comments. Let's see, because uh, look, I don't care. You can disagree with me. Uh, this is America. You don't got to agree with me. You have the right to be wrong. Uh, so the unfortunate truth of owning and running a business, running a business is really hard. No fucking shit. It's supposed to be hard. It's the hard that makes it great. I didn't say that. Tom Hanks said it in motherfucking, uh, league of their own where all the women baseball players and she's crying. Is, is she crying? Is she crying? She's crying. Everybody's looking at him because he's being mean. What? She's crying. There's no crying in baseball. There's, there's no crying in baseball. It's supposed to be hard. It's the hard that makes it fucking great. If it wasn't hard, everybody would be doing it, and there wouldn't be any room at the top for me and you. God, dog. Hell, it's supposed to be. every Anything worth having is going to be hard. Shit. Come on, man. I better finish this tomorrow. I don't know. Let's go on. What they don't tell you is that it can cause severe stress and anxiety and drains you mentally to the point of depression in even the most laid back people. No, man. No, no, no. In my program, Mental Martial Art, defend yourself against your toughest opponent, you. No one controls your fucking anxiety and your depression except for you. You play the, play, you play the pictures which turn into movies, which will cause you the emotions that you feel, which will give you the anxiety like I'm having right now reading your dumbass fucking post. I ain't finished with that one. Hang on. Because, yeah, depression and anxiety is real. I'll give you that. It's real in your fucking head. You know how to change your physiology is the quickest way to change your, is, is to change your mental state is to change your physiology. Get up and fucking move. Get up and walk. If I ask you right now, everybody got to, I got to move. Man. I got to get out of this chair. If I ask you, if I ask everyone right now, come on, I want you to stand up 
and show me what it looks like if you're depressed. Every fucking one of you would do the same thing. You stand up, you slip over your shoulders, you bend over your back a little bit, you would slump, you'd bend your knees a little bit, you'd lean over like this, and just like fucking Charlie Brown. And, and, and everyone would know how to, 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 to do the physiology and show me as, as an actor what it looks like to be depressed. You wouldn't walk in there like this, woo, like Ric Flair, nature boy. Woo! Some of y'all know what I'm talking about right now. Woo! <laughs> Don't act like I'm the oldest one right now, okay? But you you know, and, and, and that's what, oh, woe is me. Business is hard. You can't breathe. You can't say, you got to change your, oh my God, man. No one controls you but you. Get that out of your fucking head. Stop watching the goddamn news. Stop turning off the, the radio, the television. Shit, man, you control it. You, nobody but you. You got to get that because, yes, you will be depressed. Shit, man, I told you, it's hard being Atlas. It's hard holding up the world. And you are the man of the world. You're the man of your house. Shit, step up, step up. Don't whine about it, bitch. Come on. It's supposed to be hard. You control you. You control your mental thoughts. You control your thought patterns. You control the pictures that play in your mind. You control the depression, all of it. Do something different. You can't keep doing the same fucking thing, getting the same fucking result and wondering what's going on. Good Lord, man. No, no, it, it doesn't. It does not cause severe stress and anxiety and drains. It's the fucking opposite. Man, once I built my business and I got this, once I learned this, I spent 90% of my time at Disneyland. It used to be called the happiest place on earth, but now they've changed all the billboards around here to where it says your happiest place on earth. I was there every day with my family and my crews were out working. My sales guys were answering the phones, selling more jobs. And I was rolling in the dough. I used to shoot fucking like 78 in golf because I didn't work. I spent time on the driving range with my golfing coach. Once I sold my business and went back to work, shit went from 78 to now I'm shooting 90 again. I'm back down to 78, but trust me, I didn't have the leisure because I sold my business. So I had to do, I had to start another business. I ain't have time to golf. Let's carry on, people. People will talk about you, compare you to others, use you. They will view you as a service and not as a person anymore. Motherfucker, if you provide the service, you are a service. I mean, what is that? And you want people to talk about you. My boy Anthony James says, uh, marketing is for businesses that aren't newsworthy. Get, get in front of you. They're supposed to be talking about you. They're supposed to be saying how great you are. I don't care if it's painting, doing roofs, remodeling, doing wood floors, cleaning wood floors. I don't care. Cutting hair, teaching karate, dancing. You providing a service. You are a service. Motherfucker. Woo. Like, uh, <laughs> like, uh, uh, the, what's it? The Fox, uh, Man, uh, what's the uh, Red Fox said one time? I ain't gonna be too many more motherfuckers. <laughs> I ain't gonna be too. It's like this is people will talk about you and compare you to others. Yes, they should. They should. They should say. They should compare you to everyone that's in your. You know, I'm doing podcasts right now. I'm in the middle of writing a book called Dominate Your Trade. They should be comparing you to every one of your competitors. It's Dominate Your Trade, kick your competition's ass. They should be comparing you to them. But what if you're the one losing? You don't want to lose bitch? Is that, is that why you don't want to be compared to someone who's up here because you down here? Do better work. Be a better server. I don't know. My man uh, uh, Zig Ziglar says you can have anything in the world you want if you help enough other people get what they want. That's by serving them. The more people you serve, the more shit you get. That's what we do. That's, what we, that's how we make money. Whew. We ain't sitting around here waiting on Biden. Yeah, riding with Biden. No, hell no. Let's continue. Friends and family will expect discounts and people will value and your hard work less than a big chain store. No, man, that's the clean, that's the complete fucking opposite. That's the complete fucking opposite. They know you ain't a big chain store. They know they got you, the one and only, the great, the goat, greatest of all time. I'm the, the, I'm the goat. People hate me, man, because I come across like a dick. They say, Brian, why you come across like a dick when you first meet people? I say, because I want to weed out all the motherfuckers I don't want to hang around with. Because if you can't take it, you can't take the heat, get out the kitchen, that kind of shit, right? 
Because then if you say, man, the dude's a dick, but he's all right. Hey, man, then we can we can hang out forever. <laughs> but if you got like a little soft feelings, but you know, it's better to find out right now and let's move on. But uh, friends and family will expect discounts. I don't give a fuck what they expect. Are you giving them a discount? Then that's your goddamn fault. Now, you know, I told you, you got to give them a discount because they friends and family, the friends and family discount. This ain't Verizon, motherfucker. Shit. Oh, there again, you whining and crying because you giving someone a discount. They ain't hold a gun to your fucking head. You uh, charge them more. I don't do for, I don't, I don't work for friends and family members. Why? Because I want to remain friends and family. <laughs> I don't work for neighbors either. That's not true. Next door people, man, I, I, we did they floor, but, uh. I don't like it, man. Shit, they call you for every little hair that ends up on the on the floor. They may sweep that shit up yourself, not me. I need this cold water because I am hot right now. And I'm hot because so hundreds and hundreds of people agreed with him. That means hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of contractors are feeling the same way. If you feel that way, quit. Quit and go get a job. You get the clock in at seven, clock out at three, and you ain't got to worry about shit the rest of the night, the rest of the day, get your weekends off maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> but, but then you behold it to someone else. What if they fire you? What if they go out of business? What if they? What if the? What if the dude you work for feels like this? This pussy ass motherfucker. You want to work for someone like that? Hell no! I hope not. Woo! Shit. Uh, let's let's continue. It says you have to worry, worry, bitch. You gotta worry about shit. God damn, worry. Mm, mm. Man, my, my brother used to say, "God, God rest his soul." He said, "Man, if you're scared, climb in my pocket. I'll protect you." It's like, man, we're going to go in here. I want you to do just what I say when I say it and don't shit on yourself. Don't you got to worry. It says you have to worry if you forget to email or message someone back. Don't forget. Motherfucker, have a journal, have a notebook, have a reminder. Hire people to tell you that you don't forget. And if you do forget, big fucking deal. Tell them, hey, I forgot. I'll send it to you right now. It's over with. The hell are you worrying about that you didn't send someone an email? What the fuck? I wish that's what I had to worry about. Woo! There, uh, and you got to worry if they're going to think it was on purpose. Did you disappoint them? Man, I don't care if I disappoint you. You can't disappoint me and I can't disappoint you. Again, that goes back to what you put in your mind and how you think. Uh, and, and what was it? Like, uh, are they going to think if you uh, if you did it on purpose? I don't know, man. What what kind of reputation do you have that people think you uh, did it on purpose? Uh, will they hold that against you? If they do, don't work with them. Don't deal with them. When in reality, you just can't get to everyone's messages and emails. No, you can't. No, you can't. That's the see. That's the part that you need to fucking learn about business. You need to learn how to run a business. You ain't supposed to be doing every fucking thing. You're supposed to be calling up Bill and Fred, going, "Hey, man, you forgot to send someone an email or a message. Get on that shit." You can't do everything. Put it on someone else. Your job as a business owner is to replace yourself as quickly as you can. That's it. Your job as the business owner is to replace yourself as quickly as you can. If you have to be there, it's not a business. It's a fucking job. And if that's the way you're going to run it, go get a job, man. I'm telling you, it is so much easier to go through life as an employee if you're not going to be the proper employer and know how to, and, and run a business the way it should be run to where it runs itself. And you don't have the weight of the world and crying on Facebook. Let's continue. Uh, starting up and running a successful business. Well, one motherfucker, it ain't successful uh, the way you crying, but uh, let's, let's starting up and running a successful business puts incredible strain on personal lives and relationships, many of which fail because there is just often no work life balance. God damn. Don't go anywhere. I swear to God, don't go anywhere. This may be the most profound thing you've ever heard. Starting and running a successful business puts incredible strain on personal lives and relationships, many of which fail because there is just often no work life balance. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right. We think in pictures. 
So for every word I say, if I say bicycle, you've got a picture of a bicycle in your mind right now. If I say motorcycle, you've got a picture of a motorcycle in your in your head right now. Hopefully it's my Indian, not a Harley. If it's a Harley, I'm with you all the way. My daughter's name is Harley. Uh, but we, we think in pictures. So when I use the word balance and someone says, oh, man, you got to have a balanced life. Ooh, ooh, balanced life. Ooh, ooh. Uh, and, and so when I say balanced life, you're going to think picture. You're going to think like balancing beam or you're going to think of uh, you're going to picture like the, the lady law of justice where she's holding the scales and they're balanced. If I say uh, if I grab a chalk line or something this is, and, and I say, OK, is that balanced? And you say no. Uh, what do I need to do? Well, you need to bring your right hand down, which would be your left, or and the other hand up. And I say, okay, well, well is that balance? It's like, well, no, you went too far, Brian. Come back. Is that is that balance? Yeah, yeah, no, no, go back. Boom, right there, Brian. That's balance. That's balance, Brian. Okay, so if you if you got a friend in the hospital and you and he's hooked up to the heart monitor and you walk in and you see this, beep, no man, that ain't balance. That's dead. That's dead. Okay, so you walk in, you walk in and you see beep beep. Zzz, Beep, beep, zzz, beep, beep. That's balance. That's the heartbeat, baby. Up and down, up and down. See, beep, flat line. That's dead. You, 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 you yelling cold blue, cold blue. They run in with a defibrillator. Shock his ass. Clear, poop, poop. Damn, turn it up. Clear, poop, poop. Beep, 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 beep. Back to life. He's back to life. He's a living. He's alive. It's the up and downs. It's the highs and the lows. Life is an emotional roller coaster. It's up to you to learn how to enjoy the ride. It ain't supposed to be this. Okay? So anytime you've been sold a, bu- uh, a, a, a bag of bullshit when someone's telling you, oh, man, let's get a life balance. Bullshit. Bullshit, man. When you're first starting your business, you may be waking 80, 90, 60, 100 hours a week. And you even tell the life, you tell the wife and you tell the kids, you say, man, look, for this, I'm going to do a 90-day run, 60. Man, three months, boom, maybe even three years. I'm going to do this, this, this. And boom, and then at the end of that, I got this game plan. You shared a goal plan with me. You say, man, I need your help. We ain't going to be doing this. We ain't going to have no vacations this year, man. It's going to be nothing but build a business, build a business. Boom, 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 boom. It's like, beep, boom. And then when everything comes together, it's like, ah, beep, beep. You got the highs and the lows, man. It's like, you need to learn how to deal with it because there ain't no such fucking thing as balanced life. If you look at the yin yang, there's one close to here, right? That's my one of my buddy's karate shirts. Uh, big shout out to uh, Twin Lakes Snake River uh, Karate Studio, Kajakimbo. But the yin yang uh, is a little hard in the soft. There's like the, you see the yin yang. It's all because it's all woven together. And there's a there's a little white dot in the black, and there's a black dot in the white because there's always a little hard in the soft. There's always a little soft in the hard. It's always mixed together. So no, man, you ain't gonna have. You ain't supposed to have about. There ain't no such thing as a balanced life. I mean, there's gonna be some days and some weeks that it's all about work. There's gonna be some days and some weeks where it's all about family. But once you learn business and you get people doing everything for you and the business is running itself, it's kind of unbalanced then because then it's just like shit. I remember sitting at home going, I'm always going to the cabin and skiing by myself, and because the kids are in school, and I'm like, man, fuck school. Man, what? I quit school in the ninth grade, man. They ain't got to go to school. <laughs> it's like, and the wife's doing stuff because she's got to run them all over the place. And they got dance or something. It's like, it's just, and I'm like, man, I'm going to go back to work. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. But no, man, it's like, there is no such thing as this balance thing, man. Oh, and your relationships are your own. You need to read some relationship books, man. Make everything about other people. But I, I, I'm telling you, it's just, there, there is no balanced life. You need to be the director, the worker, the administrator, the marketing team, the accountant, the cleaner, all whilst being a parent, a husband, or a, a wife. Family support, friend, is one of the hardest things you will try and balance. Again, with the balance shit, all of that. No, no man, no, no, no. Running a business is the complete Owning a business is the complete fucking opposite. You're not supposed to be the administrator, the marketing team, none of that. You need to know all of it. Trust me, I, that's why... I, I, that's why I got all these classes and videos and books and shit. You need to learn all of it and so that you can hire and train someone to do it or you can hire someone to do it and then you can look at what they're doing and you can go, no, man, that's bullshit. I, look, I don't want to do it. I know how to do it. I know I, I can do it. I don't want to do it. I want to pay you to do it, but you're going to do it right. So you need to know how to do it, but you don't do it. You don't do none of it. You hire someone to do it. 
and you build your reputation in your company so that you can charge homeowners enough so that you can pay everybody enough so that they all do it. I mean, it's like you got to learn business. There's a reason people go to school and, 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 and learn this shit. You don't watch videos on the UFC and marsh, mixed martial arts and then get into the ring. It, 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 you got to get trained first. Just because you learn the trade doesn't know that's nothing to do with the business. You've got to learn the business, and you can learn it. I mean, yeah, you can learn it in the ring. You could, but you you can't keep doing the same shit over and over again, thinking, "Oh my god, that hurt," and, and then you do it again. Oh man, that hurt. It hurt the first time. What the fuck made you think it wasn't going to hurt the second time? <laughs> you think it ain't going to hurt the third, fourth, and fifth time? Of course you're going to be drained. Let's go on. Ugh. There's a reason you don't see many people succeed in small businesses after five years. And please, man, in the in the comments, tell me if you, you, you don't have to agree with me. Hit me up. Ask me some shit like people been bugging me all day long in Facebook trying to tell me that I'm wrong. No, I'm not wrong. I'm 100 fucking percent right. 100 percent right. And it's crazy because when I posted this in my business groups, the people who are business people uh, to where they don't care what it is. It could be, a hair, could be a hair salon, could be a dance studio, could be a paint store. They don't care. They, they could open it up and they could make it successful. They're going to hire a painter. They're going to do them. They got they know how to do the marketing. They know how to do the sales. They know how to set up a business and they hire someone to do it. They just got someone to answer the phone, collect the fucking checks. So it doesn't matter what service. Remember this guy talking about people think you're a service. No shit. You're a service. So it doesn't matter what the service is. These, these are business people. They know what it is. I posted that in some of the, uh, a couple of my business groups and they all went boo hoo. No shit. It's like, it, it's crazy. But in the construction trades, everybody was like, right on, man. It's so, it's like, that's, that's what, man, it's like, it's too short of a life to go through it miserable like that. Your family means way more, or they should mean way more than for you to spend 80 hours a week working and then coming home frustrated and all this other shit that this, this guy is, 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 is spouting. But let's carry on. There's a reason you don't see many, many people succeed in small businesses after five years. If they are successful, they are overwhelmed. Ooh, that's a big word. It takes a toll. It's freaking exhausted, especially the past couple of years when so much has been out of control. Uh, motherfucker, if you ain't construction, the last couple of years have been the best ever. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I don't. But as soon as they said lockdown, the phone started ringing and has not stopped. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what you're talking about in the last couple of years, brother. Uh, but no, the reason you don't see maybe if it's overwhelming and it takes a toll, that's again, 100% wrong, man. When you've got a successful business that's running itself, the money keeps getting deposited, you're off on vacations, you're in the mountain skiing, you're going to Disney with your kids, you're at the beach, you're in the RV and wherever you're going and stuff, the business is, you know, you answering the phone a couple of times, you know, overseeing things from no matter from where you're at. That's not overwhelming. Uh, that don't take a toll on you. It takes a toll on you when you're trying to run the business the way you're trying to run it, which is not running a fucking business. It's you, you trying to you having all these pity parties and thinking you need to because you don't understand business. You're trying to be the tradesman and do everything because you don't know any fucking better. That's what I'm saying. Stop giving bad advice on Facebook and having people cheer you on and everybody agree because now you just got to. 100, 200, 300,000 people fucking agreeing with you, and it's wrong. I don't care how many people agree with you, it's fucking wrong. Jesus. And people are not, companies go out of business, not just the construction trades. The construction trades fail more, but they go out of business in five years because one, they go into business not knowing business. It's plain and simple. They save up a little bit of money, if any, uh, the money that they do spend or save up, they spend all of it opening up a showroom or this or that and and do all this other stuff. And, and then the phone doesn't ring and, and they call me up and go, hey, what's going on? I say, well, no, you got a couple grand, five grand. We can put on, oh, I spent all my money. I spent all my money. I said, you spent all your fucking money. You didn't do any marketing. How, how are they going to find you? 
How are they going to call you? Who's your sales team? How do you answer the phone? How's the sales guy talk when they go out there? What's your procedures? What's your systems? How do you hire people? What's your employee handbook? How's the manual? How do you train people? What with the people that you do hire? What can they look forward to? How do you pay them? Do you train them to be, to be pay piecework? Do you have a program? We got a program to where if they wanted their own business, they go through our system to where at the end of about five years, 10 years, they're ready to open up their own business. They, they've got it all. And they go out. It's like business training, better than business training. It's on the hands on business training. We offer that. They, they want to come work for us. What do you got? Uh, 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 yeah, no shit. Uh, 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 go on Facebook and cry about it. Whew. Whew. Especially the last couple of years. Man, the last couple of years have been stupid good. Kind of scares me. Uh, so here's a small reminder that we are just normal people. Not me. Fuck it. I am not normal. With a hectic life. Uh, I may have a hectic life. I mean, I'm all over the place, man. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to plan another across the country motorcycle ride this year. And I got the RV. We got to go somewhere. And I got a wedding cousin that's getting married. I want to be there. And I got, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm teaching karate seminars at several places across the country. I want to do more business seminars for, for contractors. I mean, that is kind of hectic, but I, I can only do what I can do. If I get on Facebook and I yell at you. Uh, but here's a small reminder that we're all just normal people. Every one of you are special and you're not normal. And you're special in your own way. I don't, I don't mean special like you're riding a small bus to school. Uh, be kind, be patient, support small businesses, and hopefully more of us will stick around. So there's probably that 2% that he had right. Uh, be, be patient and support small p uh, businesses and be kind. But be patient is kind of like these motherfucking wannabe motivational speakers. Uh, Brian, you're a motivational speaker. No, man, I'm a realist. Uh, you can sit around all day long, cross your legs and, and sing Kung Bai Ya and pray and hope for things to be better. But if you don't get off your, if you don't get off your ass and do something different, ain't nothing going to be different. Ain't nothing going to be better. Uh, that's, and that's the facts. Uh, sit around and pray and meditate all you want. But if you want to make a change and make a difference in your life, get up and take action. Massive action. Man, in 2001, when I sold my first company and went on the road with Les Brown, Zig Ziglar, and those guys, I had a stupid ass, I bet I still have it, full body poster of me doing like this. Your life's successes depend on your actions. And man, I hate that damn thing now. <laughs> my wife and kids used to pick on me all the time. <laughs> but it's true, man. Your, your life and your successes depend on your actions. No one else's. No one else's. Uh I mean, there's education. I mean, with today's technology, you have no more excuses. Just just none. Just none. I mean, just the YouTube videos alone, I mean, you, you can learn enough. You can hire a coach. You can hire a business coach. You can hire a marketer. You can hire a marketing team. You can buy into marketing courses and learn marketing. You can learn how to hire and train. You can learn how to motivate. You can learn how to – it's all there. It's all of it. Uh, most of it is probably free, but you get what you pay for. I mean, spend the fucking money. Uh, I don't know. It's like, and, and everything is this, man. Everything is this. This is my sword. This is my shield. Mm, it's all in the journal, man. You track your life daily. You take a sheet of paper. Let me do this for y'all. Take a sheet of paper, draw a line down the center of it. Just like that. No big deal. Can you see that? Boom. Draw a line up at the top. On the right, you're going to say, what did I do today? And you do this every day. But one, you got to know, you got to have the goals. I mean, you got to, you can't just wake up and wander around. I mean, you got to know, like, I ask contractors all the time. I'm going to get back to this. Uh, but I ask contractors all the time, you know, you know, what kind of business do you want? I mean, it's your business. You get to develop it and turn it into whatever you want. Do you want to build it and sell it? Do you want to build it and franchise it out? Do you want to build it and open up different locations? 
And it usually starts with like, how much money do you need? Uh, how much money do you want? Uh, if I'm your business coach, if I'm your friend and you're, and you're telling me, man, you need to make 10 grand a month, 20 grand a month, 60 grand a month. That's fine, man. We can work backwards. Uh, how many calls have to come in? Maybe we need 10 calls to turn into five jobs and maybe we need to do five jobs a week to make so much amount of money. I mean, we, you, you track everything. There's a mathematical equation for everything and we just break it down. And then, so if we need 50 calls a week, do we get the 50 calls a week because 50 calls turns into be 25 jobs and the 25 jobs gives us the, the 50 grand profit that we need all of it. And how many employees do we need to, to, to do those 50 jobs? And so uh, how many employees does it take to get one good employee? Maybe it takes 10 employees to, you got to go through 10 employees to get one good employee. All right. Well, how many applications do we have to go through to get one employee? Maybe we got to go through 20 applications to get one employee. So now we need a 200 applications to get what we do the numbers, man. It, it, it can all be done, but you gotta, you, you gotta know where it is that you're heading every day that you wake up. You've got to know what, why you're getting up, why you're doing what you're doing, what, how you want to build, what, what you want to build. Uh, because if you can tell me where it is that you want to go, I can help you get there. Anyone can help you get there. Uh, but the first thing that we do when you say you, when you tell me, we, if you, if you're using your navigation and we all have the navigation on our phone and we all use it. So I'll go to navigation and I type in a certain address. What's the first thing my navigation does? You type in the address because you know where you want to go. So you tell me you want so much money per month, per year profit. Profit is the only thing I care about. Uh, so we know now we know where you want to go. So the first thing we have to do is just like the navigation from the satellite system is we have to pinpoint exactly where you're at. We have to know exactly where you're at. And this guy writing this post is 100 percent completely lost. I don't even know if he knows what he wants because he's and I looked at his picture. He's old. Uh Shit, maybe he's young, but the way the way the way life's been treating him, shit, he could be twenty. I don't. Know. <laughs> uh, we looked old, but uh, so you have to pinpoint exactly where you're at. That navigation knows when I'm in the freaking parking lot of a mall, and it tells me leave the parking lot, turn right on Tustin Avenue, go down here and do that. So it gives me uh, exact directions on, on where to go. It even tells me when there's traffic jams and stuff, take a different route, all of that stuff. It's the same thing, man. You just map it out to where you want to go, but you have to know where you're at right now. And that means you have to stand in front of the mirror naked, take a shower, get out of the shower, stand there, butt ass naked. I ain't no lying because I can put clothes on and lie to myself. So you can't lie. Don't lie to yourself about where you are right now in all areas of life, business, personal, financial, spiritual, all of it, relationships that this guy is talking about. Uh, and be honest with yourself and write it all down. We got to know exactly where you're at and write it down as bad as it is. Don't make it worse than it is, but don't make it better than it is. Don't tease yourself and say, well, it's not that bad. Yes, motherfucker, it's that bad. <laughs> the house is on fire. Stop. All right. Stop pouring gas. <laughs> Do something different. So you got to be honest where you're at, where you want to go. And then you just map it. And then every day you get up and you've got a plan of action. And then at the end of the day, we come back to this stupid little sheet of paper with a line down the middle. And at the end of every day, you write down, what did I do that helped me get closer to my goals? On the other side, you write down, what did I do that took me away from my goals? And you just keep track because at the end of the week, you're going to look at all of it and you go, damn it, I need to stop doing that. I need to start doing more of that. And each week, each month, you get a little closer. You take six steps forward, four steps back, six steps forward, three steps back, eight steps forward, six steps back. But every week, every month, every year, you're taking steps and steps and steps. And every time you're going back, you're learning and you're not doing the same stupid ass mistakes over and over again because you've been keeping track of them and you know not to do that anymore because you know the outcome. 
So to say, oh, whoa, 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 I did that before. Yeah, I, I know. Look, I've I seen that movie. I know how that turns out. Don't need to watch that again. All right. So I feel a little bit better about myself now that I got this off my chest. Uh, so now maybe I can put the lid on this water and go get myself a real drink because, you know, it's Thursday. And my Thursday is your Friday because I'll be playing golf tomorrow the same way I've been playing golf every Friday for the last 22 years with the same motherfuckers. <laughs> old friends, some old friends. Hang on, don't go anywhere. I call them old friends, not because we've known each other for over 35 years, but because these motherfuckers are old. <laughs> they're old. They're like 76, 77, 84. And the 84 year old, uh, he's probably 82. Every time I say that, he goes, I'm 82. But that motherfucker kicks my ass in golf in great shape. The only dude to ever beat Chuck Norris twice. That's right. That's right. Talking about you, Carlos Bunda. Uh, in uh, the 1964 uh, Grand uh, Long Beach uh, Karate Championships, Bruce Lee was there doing his demonstration. He was supposed to fight the, the, the champion, which was my man, uh, Carlos. And uh, Chuck Norris snuck out the back door, didn't want to mess with him. I mean, Chuck Norris, sorry. Bruce Lee snuck out the back door, didn't want to fight him. So uh, he tells us different. He, he tells the, the story different. He would tell you that, no, no, Bruce Lee, uh, he would have beat me up. Bullshit. He would have kicked Bruce Lee's ass. Uh, he goes, oh, no, Bruce Lee was under contract with the Green Hornet at the time. Couldn't, he couldn't be fighting. That part may be true, but he, he didn't want none of Carlos. But uh, so, yeah, be, be playing golf tomorrow. All right, guys. Uh, it's been a long one, man. Hope you set through it. Hope you got something from it. Don't get, don't look, man. Everybody watching this, everybody watching this. We all know somebody. When I'm in, when I'm on stage, I'll say, uh, raise your hand. So you're watching this video right now. Raise your hand if you know someone that the only time they seem to be happy is when they make it other people miserable. Raise your hand. Everybody knows somebody like that. Because if you're not raising your hand right now, it's probably because you the motherfucker making people miserable. <laughs> but it, it, it's true. Uh, it don't, it, life is anything you want it to be. Anything. Man, I'm telling you, because I've been there, I've done that. Man, I've done that. God, Lee, I could have died 30 years ago, and I would have fulfilled all my dreams. It's just, I've lived a life I never thought possible. Didn't finish high school. Didn't finish the freshman year. My brother at the age of 22 got knocked in the head, threw in the river, pulled out eight years later, died, uh, buried as a John Doe. My oldest brother is homeless in Salt Lake City in the men's shelter. Go look him up. Anthony Adams. He'll be there. Anthony Wayne Adams. Uh, my two sisters is just... In, uh, my youngest baby sister in and out of jail consistently, consistently. It's like, God damn, she just don't, she won't learn. Do a little bit better now. I mean, she, maybe she's on parole or thinking about going to jail. Uh, but it's, uh, those are all choices that they made. All choices. Yeah, we had a bad childhood. Who fucking didn't? All right. I mean, everybody can sit around and tell their bad sob stories. All that means is you've done more. You've been through more. You've 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 got less reasons to do stupid shit because you've already seen all the stupid shit. <laughs> so, so if you've seen the stupid shit and then repeated and did the stupid shit, whose fault is that? You you've seen that movie. You know how it plays out. You've all that shit that you've went through, and we've all went through something. You're either in something, and it, it doesn't stop. You're in something right now. You're in something right now. You're going through something right now. You're going through something, or you came out of something, or you're headed for something. But that's that's the beep, 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 beep. You don't want the beep. The moment you're not going through something or headed for something or in something, it's probably because you're dead. Man, it's it's an emotional roller coaster. Learn to, to enjoy the ride. But if you're going to be in business, you've got to learn business. The same way you learned your trade and mastered it, you have to learn and master business. All right, man. I can't say no more. I'm done. I am out of here. Uh, wait, before I get out of here, because my boy Patrick wrote a paragraph. You're exactly right about not knowing how to run the business. 
if I got to work down, but I struggle on the business side. That's why I chose to take a little bit of time away from my business to go to work with a few other successful businessmen. And it's, and, and that's a part of it too, man. And I, and, uh, cause me and Patrick, we've talked on the phone a couple of times. Uh, man, I love, Hey man, I love it when you post pictures of you and your daughter and stuff. It just, cause I'm old now, man, my kids are growing up, but, uh, I kind of live vicariously through you and man, there's nothing wrong. Like that's, that's right. There is admitting going, Hey man, I'm gonna go work for some, uh, some other successful business people. Maybe he'll go over there because he knows his trade in, in, in our industry and in these Facebook groups, everybody goes to him for advice. I mean, he's like the guy, he's the goat. And, uh, but like you said, struggling with the business part, maybe he'll go over here and see what they're doing and take that back with him and do things different. Uh, but it is, it's, it's a writing down, you know, like all the videos and shit that I have on running the business and how you answer the phone and how you get the phone to ring and how you have to train the people. That shit's not easy. Uh, it's a pain to ask because you have to do it. But once you you've done it, it's done. And then you, you get to use that for years to come and you just tweak it a little bit as things change. This internet shit is way new to me. I sold my first business before the internet. That's crazy, right? Who? That's crazy. Uh, and this dude said, what's up, King? Uh, King Lu uh, Uthred. Uthred. I'm Lord Uthred. Man, I love that show. Uh, damn it. Facebook user. It, it doesn't show who it is. Anyway, I hope you're doing good, brother. Uh, we can do whatever we want. It's our choice. 100%. 100%. You have to make a conscious decision every day to make your life and business better. Every day. Every day. Every day. Man, and, and, and at one time I thought, man, I'm, I'm telling these guys every day you got to get up and do this. Every day you got to draw this line. Every night, every day before you go to bed. Uh, and you know what? I think... I think I have it on PDF. So if you've watched this video this fucking long, uh, the first, well, one of the first books, it's probably the third or fourth book I did, but it's my baby. It's called Caffeine for the Mind. Thoughts that wake you up and make you think. Uh, man, it's over there. I ain't gonna take time to go get it. Uh, but life success is depend on your actions. That's one of the quotes that's in it. But uh, tomorrow's successes start today meaning that every night you don't get to go to bed until you write out tomorrow's tomorrow tomorrow's goals. And so you wake up with already knowing what you're going to do. Uh, I get up pretty much every morning, go to CrossFit. I will register the night before, but I do not look at the workout because I don't want to, because I, I won't be able to sleep. I'm going to, God damn, I got to do that many box steps, that many box jumps. I got to do this. So I don't look at the workout. I go in, but they've got it planned. So I don't have to think about it. I just go in, I get it done. So the night before, uh, you go to bed, you've got to write it all down. Zig Ziglar did a great exercise years ago, changed my life. Uh, and hell, we're in it this long. Let's keep going. <laughs> Shit, bring on the tequila. So Zig Ziglar did a, uh, it changed my life. So his whole thing was, guy calls you up. He says, man, me and my wife got eight days in Hawaii, everything is paid for. Airfare is paid for, hotel is paid for, got a $2,000 voucher, uh, food is already paid for. You get to spend a $2,000 on gifts, uh, any other things that you may want to do. We cannot go. You leave in a week. You, 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 do you want this trip? And the wife is on speakerphone, the wife hears it, and the wife is like, hell yes, we've been wanting to go to Hawaii for 30 years. You ain't turning this down. Tell him yes, tell him yes. So. Tells him yes. Hangs up the phone and he starts going, oh my God, I can't go to Hawaii. I can't go to Hawaii for eight days. There's no way I can go to Hawaii for eight days. Oh my God. He go, and the wife is like, we going to Hawaii. I don't care if you have to close this business. So he sits down and he grabs his book and he starts planning out every day what has to happen those eight days that he's uh, gone. So now that he knows what has to happen every day for those eight days, what has to happen? He writes down exactly how it has to happen, how it has to get done. He writes down what time you got to start, what time you should be finished with this exercise and what you got to do when you finish doing that. And then you got to call this person. And he, and he writes it out 30 minutes by 30 minutes by 30 minutes. And he goes, boom, 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 boom. So by the end of the day, 
He's got it all written out. So all he has to do is hand it to the guy that's working for him. And he goes, everything's right here. I've written it all down. And he said, if you plan every day, like he planned those eight days in a year's time, you'll see a difference. And I said, God damn, that makes sense. Damn, that makes sense. Zig, Zig, that makes sense. And Zig's got a lot of good stuff. Um, but it is, man. If you if you plan it out every day. So you, Sunday night, you're talking about you're planning out the whole week. And you every day, Monday, I'm going to do this. Tuesday, I'm going to do this. Wednesday's going to do this. Thursday's going to do this. You sit down and you say, okay, this stuff has to get done on Monday. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to start at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. We're going to get up at 6 o'clock. We're going to give 40, the first 45 minutes is just for me and my time, whether it's walking around the block, doing a couple push-ups, working out, having a shake, protein, whatever it is. Give, wake up, give yourself your time to, to begin with. Boom. And then we're going to do this at this time. A got boom, boom, boom. Now, so you can have it all done on Sunday night. And then every night before you go to bed, you look at it and you say, hey, has anything changed? OK, Monday went pretty good. But tomorrow, Tuesday, we would plan to do this, this and this. But you know what? We're going to do this. we got to make this many phone calls. i got to call these people back. i got to do this. Is that a lot of work? Yeah, it's a lot of work. Probably going to take you about 30 minutes. 30 fucking minutes. 30 fucking minutes. Mm. But it's going to save you 30 years. Think about that. Think about that. Whew. It's like, you know, I'm telling people, man, you should be posting on Google My Business every day, probably two or three times a day. Oh, my God, man, I ain't got no time to be posting on Google My Business. I said, dude, there's an app on your phone. It takes about 20 seconds. You ain't got 20 fucking seconds. What? What? Hire someone to do it. Get a VA, virtual assistant. All right, guys. Uh, Make today better than yesterday. Tomorrow better than today. Every day. Every day. Keep track. Keep track. Uh, you know, our biz- my business slogan forever has been specializing in perfection since 1984. I met another contractor. I met a contractor. I've known him for a while, but uh, he uses specializing in perfection. He's like, hey, man, I, t- I took it from you. Is that okay? I was like, man, I take shit from me. I got it from the universe. I don't know. Uh, but I wrote the definition, but, but it was on all our brochures. When we hand out, uh, we used to hand out brochures, uh, you know, these folders, you've seen them. I got videos that show you what they are, uh, presentation folders, but it's printed on there with our business logo and stuff, specializing in perfection. And people kept asking, perfection, you can't do perfection, perfection. That, that. So I said, I, I, I can, I, I wrote the definition. I wrote the definition of perfection. So here it is, definition of perfection. Perfection does not exist in the achievement. Perfection can only exist in the effort of the achievement. Always strive to do better than your best. Only then can you achieve perfection. I'm not going to say it again. Rewind the video. Watch it. All right, man. Get out of here. I go on and on for days. I do it for days. (laughs) My boy JB just showed up. What's up, man? Uh, JB out. Uh... Oh, JB. JB is the one making all the. All right, man. I got you. I see it. All right. JB is the one saying all that. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, hey, JB, because uh, I was telling someone about you the other day. I said, damn, man. Uh, well, you stationed in Hawaii for like nine years. I was telling my wife, I said, man, JB and his wife loved it. Didn't want to go back to Foley, Alabama. Uh, keep it simple. Grab a shovel and dig a hole. Your hole is our goal. Oh, hell yeah. Or use a backhoe. That was my boy. Making America great again. Out there in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. My home. My home. That's the uh, Krispy Kreme headquarters. What's up, brother? Glad you're here, man. Glad you're here. All right, man. 53 fucking minutes. All right. Uh, I feel better. I feel better. Don't be on Facebook whining. I'll make a video about you. (laughs) All right, man. No matter when you're watching this, you can tell me I'm wrong. I do not care. I'm just trying to help you. I could say all of this shit because it comes from love. I want you to have the life that I've had that I never thought I would have. All right, man. Uh, most of it came from my wife, though. I mean, uh, you've seen some of the stories. She keeps me in check. I am out of here.